It was really, really hard to believe that Mitch would set my dad up. It was almost unbelievable. Um, so we we were able to like reach out, um, get a message to Mitch, and For basically what? let him know that Tammy was an informant. <clears throat> We later received a he message knew. from him saying that it had to be a misunderstanding. Um, just call her. She'll straighten this <clears throat> out. Um, whoa, whoa, slow down. So what they're saying right now is the bull peep that the lady was an informant. And he like, yo, yo, Meech, yo, back and weird. I think informant, bro. Something's not right. Nah, I think she an informant. I know she an informant, bro. I need some help, bro. Come handle this. He said, bro, no, it's okay, bro. Don't worry about it. Keep talking to her. Give her as much information as possible, bro. And then stop talking to her. Okay? Meet you a nasty low damn mo What's good, your boy? Money, we back in this thing. All right, no... Oh no, man, another day, another reaction. Dollar Boys, I had to talk about Big Meech. It, it, it's a lot that goes into it. I ain't understand why he was a vocal point and why everybody was making it a big deal when he got out. When he got out and everybody was making it a big deal, I'm like, yo, why y'all riding? Bro, there's mad that just got out after 20 years on that same day he got out. But yo, I understand. I watched the documentary. I'm not gonna lie. I'm probably gonna have to go back and watch BMF on Stars. I'm not gonna lie, I ain't watch it, but now I'm a little hyped up. It makes sense. It seemed like he was giving the money that he was getting from trapping and all that. He was giving it to the people in the hip hop and a little uh, in the ATL area. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes a difference because you probably not gonna see that nowadays. So I see why people be really giving him his flowers. Cause that's not, that's, I, I, I noticed that's like kind of a thing that people used to do back in the day, like in the nineties and all that. I think it's because people really valued networks, but now since everybody is like, so internet, we don't value networks as much because we don't got to see people in person if we don't want to, if that makes sense. Before you had to see somebody in person and then you really get locked in with somebody. Now you want to give them somebody just cause a little different now, but with all that being said, they saying this nigga yelling. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I listened to the tapes. Me, it's just not looking too good, buddy. It's all signs is pointing to you, and you want us to think that like all them signs that's pointing to you is pointing to something behind you, and, and you looking back too. Nah, don't look back. It's you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, something's not right, bro. And I, it, you know, and I noticed. And I'm not gonna pause this video too much. That's why I'm trying to get all my shit out right now. He was real flashy. Cause remember, I'm a 2000 baby. I don't know nothing about this nigga. I don't know nothing about him. So I'm looking at just shit that I seen off of documentaries. I feel like if there wasn't a problem, if he ain't telling nobody, he would have been talking, chatting it up. I seen the first picture of him today. He hugging one of his homies or something like that. We have not heard this nigga speak at all. Not one word, bro. That's weird. I know he spent all that time in prison, bro, but some things about you aren't really gonna change. He might not come out saying, oh yeah, coming like he bought some shit off, off the track, but it, it, just some characteristics don't leave. I, I think some shit's funny, bro. And after you see this, you gonna think, oh yeah, something's funny, bro. Meech old ass, yeah, something not right. Yo, Lil Meech, come get your dad, bro. Come get your dad for somebody hurt him, bro. Y'all know what said. You know what they said happened to the last bull that was snitching. It had to do with BMF. Execution style. Better watch out. Smash that like button. Let's get it, bro. On the heels of Shout out to Clip Reacts, man. From a federal prison and serving 20 <laughs> years on a 30-year sentence. There's been a lot of narratives floating around on why he actually got out 10 years early. I've been consuming a lot of content and doing my own work on why he actually got out. Okay. And I was watching old Jumper. And okay. Greg Baby said something that sparked a light bulb in my thoughts. I bet he started did. to make me think. Just I can tell you out, every bro. story. Then I can tell you what's going to be the biggest politic right now. What I'm saying is, yeah. no, they trying to already put the 
How do he the, know? The word out that he used the girl third party to tell why he was in jail. That's gonna be his biggest politics. <laughs> go for it because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm gonna just no, 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 for real. Because I already yeah. seen like four videos about it. That's my big, that's my big homie. I, okay. look, uh, I got this deputy photo designer tatted. I never dug into. Mm -hmm. You know they had tried to ex Blue Da Vinci out for taking a proper. Blue all that, all they ain't did nothing but show me. I was 17 years old when they when I got into yeah, that. He's custody. a real Yo, you can't tell this nigga brick baby nothing. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if this is just some one-on-one -on -one information that they told him, bro. But, yo, like, bro, this nigga giving the scoop. He said that. I'll be mad as shit. I started to do my homework and I'll came across an interview with Blue Da Vinci on Cam Capone News. <coughs> and they had a conversation with a guy by the name of Cuffy. Where he claimed Big Meech no called her shit before him. Y'all niggas gonna take what I said out of context, bro. him up and get him 27 years. How did Meech have information on you and give it to Tammy? And how did all that come together where they were able to... I know, put, put he all said, that how did Meech have information on you and give it to Tammy so you could get caught up in it? Auntie, how did that, that happen? Play. So, that I mean, you gotta go back to the movie shit. Okay, so, well, let, let me take him back. Tammy were working on the BMF movie. I originally had the script and paid for the script for the BMF movie, not the show that, that 50's doing on Stars. But I originally paid for the script for the BMF movie. So we were shopping the movie. So Tammy was involved at that time, which is CS1. Tammy so the had, Tammy Kyle when CS1 had all meets life rights. Right. And what year was that? This this all the way back in 09, 2010. Mm, okay. So, so this, we proved that there was a legitimate business. Right, right, right. Legal business. Right. Mm. So, well, Meech, so let's, let's take it back. The original target was the guy by the name of Fidel Suarez. That was a Mexican cartel member out of California. He was the initial target. Right. What? Fidel Suarez was the initial target that's out of Cali. That's name is in the paperwork. You better run, like, nigga. That's that. Tammy was trying to get Suarez. I just added a small clip of the conversation, but that phone call was about seven minutes long. So I started to dig some more, and I came across some audio of Cuffy's daughter restoring her father's honor and telling the world that Big Meech is no good, and he snitched on her father. Which is why he in the feds right now, serving almost thirty years. I'm. I don't know. If, I don't know how credible this lady is. I don't know, but she telling her 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 dad's story and all that. And yo, I'm like, ooh. And then her dad come in and tell a story that corroborate that. I'm like, big me, tell me they lying. <laughs> It do make sense though, bro. You get out early. You acting weird. You acting out of character. It's like you are the main nigga that want to be seen. And now you finally get out after 30 years. And now you don't want to be seen. Something, something's a little iffy. I don't know. I'm going to be honest, bro. I, I'm, I'm, I, I kind of believe their stories, bro. I'm gonna be honest. I don't want to. I I hate to say that I believe them, but I believe they shit, bro. And you know something else that's weird about all this that's going on. If it wasn't true, why are your BMF and niggas? Why they ain't come out and say that? Yo, this ain't true. Stop disrespecting my homie. If this wasn't true, why you ain't come out and say, yo, these niggas tripping? What the fuck? Come on, nigga, something not right, bro. Especially the type of nigga that you are, bro. I know you old and shit now, and time went by, but like, damn, something ain't adding up, bro. Two plus two is like six right now, nigga. Tamara Gatling, I'm making this recording in regards to my dad. He's Dion Gatling. Most people know okay. him as Cuffy. Um, but I wanted to make this recording so I can shed light on some facts. Uh, my dad was set up by one of his best friends, which is Demetrius Flanori, also known Big as Meech. Big Meech. Um, my dad and Meech have been friends for 
30 years plus. Um, I've known Meech my whole life. Um, I look at him like an uncle. Like this situation has been completely devastating on so many different levels. And there's still so many questions that aren't answered. At um, this point, I can only shed light on what I know for sure to be facts. And hopefully one day I will have the complete um, truth. But in 2011, around that time, Meech reached out to my dad in regards to creating a BMF movie. So he, Meech hooked my dad up with a woman named Tammy Cohen's. At the time, Tammy was Meech's power of- Okay, 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 okay. Nobody's saying nothing. So right now what she's trying to say is Big Meech gave him the oop. What we're about to find out is the alleged uh, detective. Nigga, what? Man, I ain't gonna lie. I wanna smoke the shit out of that nigga. No, you not about to give me the oop with a detective. You you you, you sign it. You sign in my my prison certificate, nigga. What is? I hope that's not true, bro. Please tell me that's not true, Mr. Meech. Attorney. Also, she owned the life right. So Please, my dad bro. was working with Meech, Tammy, um, T, basically trying to work on a movie. Finally arrested my dad and we received the discovery. He knew exactly who CS1 was. And he told me and my mom that it was Tammy Cohen's. At that time, we really did not want to believe. That? We wanted to give Meech the benefit of the doubt. Why would you tell um, your wife that for real? It was really, really hard to they believe that they Meech would set my dad up. It was almost unbelievable. Um, so we we were able to like reach out, um, get a message to Meech, and for basically what? let him know that Tammy was an informant. <clears throat> We later received a he message knew. from him saying that it had to be a misunderstanding. Um, just call her. She'll straighten this out. Um, whoa, whoa, slow down. So what they're saying right now is the bull peep that the lady was a, uh, was a, was an informant. And he like, yo, yo, Meech, yo, bitch, I can wear. I think bitch an informant, bro. Something's not right. Not I think she an informant. I know she an informant, bro. I need some help, bro. Come handle this. He said, bro, no, it's okay, bro. Don't worry about it. Keep talking to her. Give her as much information as possible, bro. And then stop talking to her. Okay? Meet you a nasty low damn motherfucker. If this is true. If this is true. If that, if y'all, I'm going to be honest with y'all. If y'all niggas made this shit up and y'all really made up this convoluted lie, bro, y'all really is some evil people, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you, bro. But I know he was fucking with a lot of money, so y'all going to do a lot of evil, weird shit, bro. If this is a lie, y'all niggas are some real weird people, bro. So on, so on. And at this time, my dad was like, I'm not dumb. I'm not about to call an informant. The more digging I did. Yeah, why the would I keep talking I to the informant, bro? From the really? looks of it. Why would I try to find out? This narrative of Big Meech being a rat, being an informant, being a snitch for about 15 years. And I came across a jail phone call where Cuffy explained it all. But before we get to this content, make sure you hit that like button. Let's get this. Yep, shout out to the homie Clip React. You know he doing this motherfucker. Yeah, so thing. make sure you hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notifications. But we're gonna get to this content, bro, cause this looking crazy, bro. Big Meech looking like he all bad. Let me know in the comment section what y'all thinking, and we're gonna talk about it. And uh, you know, work for Vibe and a lot of other different companies, and I become a branding and marketing specialist over the years. Wow. That's my whole thing. <laughs> wow. So when I was with the source, you know, I met a lot of people, did a lot of things. When I worked with Vibe, I met a lot of people. But my thing is always being Who a humble, mean? nice guy. So, you know, a lot of times people get in positions, they arrogant and they miss all the connects. I'm the humble wow. guy. I want to talk to the 
the quiet in the corner and this person right here and the mopping the floor right. because you never know how circumstances change. You need all types of people in your corner. But um, right. so I got with Sosa, I got connected through Sosa because at the time I was doing what I'm doing, helping Pops. They brought me to Pops and they was like, yeah, he got a record label. He needs some help. He needs some consulting. Can you help him? And uh, that's how I started my relationship with the family, you know, from that point. I met, you know, <clears throat> me and most of the top guys. At the time, I was living around the corner <clears throat> with an OG named Michael Concepcion. And so okay. I would go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Mike. Yeah, I used to go the back route through the neighborhood, make sure nobody was following me to go to Pop's house once things got hot. So that's pretty much where I did. I did my business. When I fucked with them, I had a time limit. It was business. I stayed at the house for 15, 20 minutes. Shake some hands and leave. I never hung out, was a hanger on and groupie in and doing none of that shit because I knew that if I did that, n would look at me different. You know what I'm saying? So right, I just right. came, handled my business. When you saw them at the Source Awards and they was all in them seats getting the shout outs and they had the four page spread, you know, that that was all my connects back at the time because Benzino asked me, Yo, Cal, what's up with these dudes? They good? I was like, yeah, them niggas is solid, man. They good people. Because when I met Pop, right. I really didn't know anything that was going on. Right. I knew he had a record company and uh, he needed help with marketing. So I, you know, I had that girl. Now, who is Pops? Who do you call him Pops? Pops is Wayne mm. Weezy. Oh, Weezy. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see, I was lost when you said Pops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I always called him okay. Pops or Weezy, you know what I'm saying? I was lost too, bro. I was lost when you said Pops, too, bro. So, I don't know who this man is on the other end of the phone, but it's concerning to me, bro. Y'all back in the day, niggas, y'all be on some weird-ass shit. And I swear, if y'all niggas had internet, y'all niggas would have been getting violated, and y'all niggas would have been getting exposed a long, long time ago. Why the fuck are you calling Lil Wayne essentially daddy? Something's not right, bro. Something. And remember, Lil Wayne is the same bull that was kissing Birdman on the lips, bro. Something is strange. Something is askew. Something's not right. I want us to find out what that is with that. All right, because I'm concerned. So. Right, right, right. So, henceforward, you know, I was around when things. Fuck you mean, was, daddy, You know, kind of started going bad. And pops, uh, pops Fuck you mean? Got me with uh, another writer who was a bro, guy who used to be the former editor of Rolling Stone. He was trying to get us, you know, to put the whole story together and all that. And at the same time, I ran into a familiar person. I was put with this woman named Tammy Cowens. Tammy was communicating with me regarding, you know, her position, trying to help. Mm. They basically said, Cal, help Tammy. Tammy is the lady. And because they knew that at the time, Tammy, you know, she didn't know. Right. Now, let me tell you what Tammy I know. Tammy is the lady that got him in there. Tammy was communicating with me, communicating, communicating. She was telling me everything was going on. And then one day she came out. One day she disappeared. Right. She right. ghosted me. <laughs> and I could never right. figure it out. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. The first time I met her. I met her in person at the Intercontinental in Buckhead, and she she came across very striking, but it was something I couldn't put my finger on because I was like, how does this type of woman get involved? I, I couldn't I couldn't right. figure it out because she seemed right. so out of place. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But right. at the time, right. I didn't question <laughs> it. I just did what I was asked to do, which was to look out for the, the, the family. So I was looking out, <clears throat> trying to connect with her. I was dealing with Tony at the time. They were trying to do their little BMFY. Long story right. short, Pops, I held Pops down, Wayne down the entire time he was out in jail, uh, took care of some things for him. So when he came home, you know, we had already been writing on the story based on Pops' perspective and involvement. And then he put me with Sosa and Sosa blew my head off because no one in the organization, no one around could tell me about the old school shit. All I could tell me is about, you know, going forth from California, how everything came to be. But see, Sosa and myself, we were all, we all before all of that. You feel me? Right. Sosa is a day one. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And see, me, I'm the first to put a million dollars in his pocket. He never seen that till he came to the loop. You feel me? I heard he about you, dog. That. I heard you was just an oh, outstanding yeah, dude, yeah. man. Take care of your business and your reputation bro, in a good way crying, preceded bro. itself. So I understand now based on from what we've dealt with and seen with 
this whole thing with Tammy, man. Speak on that for me. What Meech and Tammy did is called it because you're not in the system. Thank God you're not. I, like, I hate to see brothers in this system. But brothers who are familiar with this system, it's a nasty, nasty system. What Meech and Tammy did was called a third-party cooperation. <clears throat> what happened was... This call is from a federal prison. Originally, I was put with Tammy. <laughs> they trying to shut this shit off. I, put, I, I paid a quarter million dollars. That's my script. That's why 50, when he came in, because we, we put a, a assistant deceased order in through my attorney. That's why they couldn't do a motion picture. That's why you didn't see the BMF story on the on the big screen. So 50 ran it through that, then he ran that other that he do. So what happened was, homie, was I wasn't even the original target. They wanted to get a little Mexican. He's actually a cartel member out of L.A. named Suarez. You'll see his name in the paperwork, Fidel Suarez. He was their initial target. You feel me? Right. You better get out of town, man. He was their initial target. But with me calling in while they were trying to set up Fidel Suarez, she clicked over and told the feds <clears throat> or the agents who was listening to her and Suarez, hold on, this is Cuff. And when they heard the name Cuff, they went, and that's when, when, when her and Meech turned the scheme toward me. You feel me? <clears throat> so what it did... What it did was, it, this was what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to give Meech a time cut for her cooperation and set me up. But also, it kills two birds with one stone. It puts me in jail, and now they don't have to split any of the revenue with me. My buddy and my partner along with me was named, his name is Louis Burrell. That's MC Hammer's big brother. That's who Tammy was coming out here to see. There you, that's, that, that, that was me. That and that was, that and, was and that I'm going to tell, tell you the year. That, that was that, 2000. 15 no that was like 14 They're way early than that it started way early than that way early than that around 2010 homie way early than that i'm sorry so yeah we gotta go way back we, yeah we we put we put 50 million dollars on the table through lion lionsgate films through lewis burrell's connect in the movie industry up there now what we did not know is why tammy would turn down that deal with me and lewis burrell getting 20 percent of, 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 of that budget you understand what I'm saying? For a finder's fee. So what ended up happening was we didn't know that they had other plans and that she was sleeping with the feds and that and, 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 and that they would put me off in prison and run away with my script and don't have to give me anything. So it, it, it was supposed to give me a time cut and knock me out of my percentage, me and Louis Burrell out of our percentage for the finder's fee with, Louis, with, with Lionsgate's film. Well, Lionsgate, when Louis went so, so they backed orders. Lionsgate... That shot it down when Louis Burrell was no, no longer a part of it. You feel me? Right. So, Tammy's whole thing fell apart. Meech couldn't get a time cut because they found out Tammy has no, she has no credibility. Because when you can't have a relationship with a federal agent, now you have no credibility. So they think blew up. They think fell all the way apart and blew up. That's why Meech didn't get a, get a time cut. But Tammy testified in open court that she signed up to be a DA informant to give Demetrius Flannery a time cut. <clears throat> this call is from a federal prison. Special agent. Tammy lost her fucking job. Tammy lo lost her job over some dick. Tammy, you a dumbass bitch. I'm keeping a beam with you. I'm keeping a beam with you. You're not a smart bitch. <laughs> I'm keeping a bean with you, bro. Because <laughs> that nigga, that nigga never gonna talk to you again, bro. Just off the fact, just off the, off the strength of who you are and what you do. And you got all these niggas all this time, bro. You really fucked your life up for this nigga for no reason. <laughs> nah, you really a nut, bro. Bro, yo, shout out to Cuffy, bro. Long story short, bro, it's looking like that nigga Meech told, bro. I'm gonna keep it a bean. She's sleeping with the goddamn everybody. She's letting her niggas fuck. So she fucked up the case, man. Smash that like button, man. What y'all? What y'all think? You think he did it? Shit, we're gonna have to look at the little uh, the uh, the Big Meech documentary if y'all really want it. So let me know. I'm gonna catch y'all next one, man. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I, I had lost a little footage. I, I would have did some more if uh, if I ain't lose that. So uh, let me know what y'all want to see next. Where I'm catch y'all next one, man. Peace.